Hello and welcome to the part 10 of my 2024 F1 season simulation. If you missed part 9, make sure to check that one out because that was a pretty, pretty crazy race. Uh, and overall, uh, the entire weekend was affected by rain uh, in some kind of form, so that was exciting. Uh, here we are for the 2024 Spanish Grand Prix. Uh, unfortunately, 11 and I couldn't make up the, couldn't make the voiceover, unfortunately, so uh it's me again <laughs> for this one as well it's a bit of a rush um uploading uh, i'm recording this today i'm gonna upload it as well so and i'm a bit sick as well so sorry for my voice if it's uh it's a bit if it's a bit weird and i cannot formulate my sentences uh properly anyways let's get into the upgrades themselves here we are for the upgrades uh from the big upgrades it's only ferrari and sauber but a lot of other teams bring uh some kind of updates to their car as it's barcelona and uh teams like to bring upgrades to that track specifically um yeah in terms of rain for the weekend there's no rain it should be completely dry for every single session forgot to mention that Anyways, a uh, lot of small upgrades to the card, uh, so the cars maybe some kind of picking order change, who knows. Um, let's see in uh, how, how the picking order is in Q1, for example. As we see, provisionally qualifying one classification, Max Verstappen is topping Q1 provisionally, more than three tenths ahead of Oscar Piastri, which is uh, quite a lot. Um, Piastri in P2, Alonso P3, Perez P4, Lando is P5. Hamilton P6, Album P7, Williams, wow, P8 for Stroll, P9 and P10 for the Ferraris of Sainz and Leclerc, P11 Hulkenberg, P12 Gasly, P13 Russell, uh, Russell is quite a way down, uh, P14 Magnussen, both passes are quite, quite way up, uh, way higher than you would expect, uh, Album as well, a very, very good friend of Williams, and uh, Mercedes seems like they're kind of Kind of slow at this track, the same as Ferraris. Maybe it's just Q1 pace, who knows. Uh, Tsunoda in P15, the last of the drivers getting to Q2 provisionally, with Ocon P16, Ricardo P17, Sergeant P18, Joe P19, and Bottas P20 so far. Yeah, uh, seems like the Racing Bulls car is probably the, being hit by, uh, by the most. Um, in terms of the track layout, it probably doesn't suit them very much because we know just how good a racing bulls car can be at times. They can literally fight with the top teams for uh, positions like P5 or P6 out of Asian. So unfortunately, uh, it looks like they're lacking some pace this weekend. Uh, so we had to the final classification. We have two lap times leaded for Ocon and George Russell which unfortunately means that both of them are knocked out in Q1. Uh, alongside them knocked out are Sargent, Joe and Bottas. This also means that both racing wheels cars actually make it through to Q2 somehow. Uh, very unfortunate, especially for George Russell, as uh, it's not a big, big blow for his Forge Hour Championship chances. And overall, um, overall, his hopes for a world title, obviously. Uh, that's quite a, quite a way, quite a bit away at this point. Um, yeah, let's head into Q2. Original Q2 standings are as follows Max Verstappen tops Q2 uh, provisionally. Uh, Signs in P2, Perez P3, Stroll P4, uh, wow, uh, P5 for PS3, P6, look bug. Uh, P7 Alonso, P8 for Albon, so Albon maintaining his top 10 pace so far, uh, provisionally in Q3, Lionel Norris only P9, and Pierre Gasly in P10. Lewis Hamilton in P11, so it looks like the Mercedes is really lacking some pace, and George Russell, if he made it through, probably wouldn't be able to get into Q3. Maybe he would, but it's uh, it's hard to, hard to tell, because Hamilton was quicker in the previous session as well. Volkenberg in P12, uh, then the Racing Wolves cars of Ricardo and Sunona P13, P14, and then there's Magnussen in P15, who had some kind of incident in during the Q2, so uh, only sad this weird lap time that's not representative at all, and unfortunately it wouldn't continue into the next session anyway. 
uh, as we head to the final classification. Um, yeah, as far as I'm aware, it's only one uh, one lap time deleted. Uh, specifically, Max Verstappen, who drops from P1 to P9, but still makes it through uh, by over one tenth of a second. So it's all right. Max is just making it through even with lap time deleted. Um, yeah. So knocked out in Q2 are Hamilton, Hulkenberg, Ricardo Sonoda, and Kevin Magnussen. Let's head into Q3. Uh, as we see Alonso on provisional pole position ahead of Checo Perez uh, and P Oscar Piastri in P3. It's a weird session. P4 for Max Verstappen, then the Ferraris of Sainz, Leclerc, P5 and P6. P7 for Stroll, only P8 for Norris, so Norris slacking qualifying once again. P9 for Albon, great, great qualifying. Uh, Ever, ever since Q1, uh, the pace of that Williams in Alvin's hands looked incredible. And P10 for Pierre Gasly in the Alpine, also pretty close to those far ahead, uh, ahead of him. Yeah, um, looks interesting, uh, not gonna lie. Uh, we saw Max technically top both Q1 and Q2. Q1 was a uh, pretty scary margin, it was, it was over three tenths of a second, but now we see Max P4, and actually Perez is the lead Red Bull in P2, uh, just over half a ten for behind Alonso in provisional pole position. Yeah, interesting. Let's see what the final classification says, and it says completely the same thing. No lady lap times this time. Alonso takes pole position for the Spanish Grand Prix. Ahead of Checo Perez and Max, uh, sorry, uh, Oscar Piastri. Max Verstappen in P4. Uh, for two Ferraris of P, uh, Science and Leclerc in P5 and P6. P7 for Stroll, P8 for Norris, P9 for Albon, and P10 for Pierre Gasly. Uh, Interesting. Let's recap the starting grid as we see Fernando Alonso line up a pole position for the Spanish Grand Prix. That's something that uh, a lot of a lot of fans would like to see next year in reality. Um, hopefully, something similar can happen at least. Uh, Perez in P two, very good qualifying from Checo. Uh, P three for Piastri, P four for Max Verstappen. Sainz in P5, Leclerc P6, Stroll P7, Norris P8, Albon P9, and Pierre Gasly in P10, with Hamilton just at the top 10 in P11, Hulkara P12, Ricardo P13, Sunoda P14, Magnussen P15, Sargent starting in P16, Ocon P17, Joe P18, Voltas P19, and Russell starting that last after the mistake in Q1. So, what will the Spanish Grand Prix bring us today? As we see the race results, we have Fernando Alonso winning the Spanish Grand Prix. Yeah, this this sentence is uh, brings a lot of joy. I'm pretty sure to a lot of fans. Uh, as we have Checo Perez actually had a Max Verstappen in a race uh, in P2. Max Verstappen obviously in P3 with the fastest lap. P4 for Oscar Piastri. Um, still a very good result. P5 for Sainz. P6 for Stroll. So Stroll getting some points at least. Uh, compared to Alonso's victory, P7 for Charles Leclerc, P8 for Lando Norris, P9 for Lewis Hamilton could get into the points, and P10 for Albon staying in the points with the Williams, very good. Pierre Gasly in P11, just outside the points in the Alpine, uh, P12 for Suna, P13 for Ricardo, P14 for Esteban Ocon, P15 for Nico Hulkenberg, only P16 for George Russell, so he could only manage uh, to make up four positions, so it looks like Mercedes was really slow. And uh, this particular race weekend, unfortunately. Uh, Logan Sargent in P17, Kevin Magnus in P18, and then the Sauber cars of Guanajuato and Walter Bottas in uh, the last few positions. Uh, no DNFs this time, uh, no interruptions whatsoever, uh, No, not even a single yellow flag. But the only interesting thing is uh, you would not normally expect Perez to remain out of Verstappen in, in this circumstance, so it's probably. Some kind of uh, refusing of team orders from Perez, perhaps. Uh, we don't really know, but I mean, if Max was the fastest lap, probably was the fastest driver uh, during this race weekend and during this race. So perhaps uh, Perez just defended hard from Max, uh, which is a weird thing because Alonso is his main rival in the championship. Uh, let, let's see we will drive a championship after round 10 as Alonso uh, catches up to Max Verstappen only 5 points away now thanks to 
uh, Perez not letting me through, essentially. Uh, Max uh, won 60 points, 2 victories, 6 podiums, 3 poles, and 5 fastest laps. With Alonso, 5 points behind, and if, uh, on the monitor, 55 points, 3 victories, 5 podiums, 3 pole positions, and a fastest lap. Uh, George, Russell, George Russell remains in P3 despite the non-points finish. On 111 points, a victory, 5 podiums. Then we have Oscar Piastri in P4, dropping the plug. On 111 points, 2 victories, 3 podiums, 2 poles, and a fastest lap. P5 for Leclerc, 1 victory, uh, 2 podiums, 3 fastest lap, and 106 points. P6 for Norris, 84 points, 2 podiums, and a pole position. P7 for Lewis Hamilton on 79 points and a podium. P8 for Carlos Sainz on 74 points, one victory, two podiums, and a pole position. P9 for Perez, still quite a, quite far behind Verstappen. Uh, now it's uh, 92 points gap after 10 races. Uh, despite this weekend, it still looks hor hor horrible. And uh, yeah, if if Perez keeps up the form from Spain, perhaps. He can remain in the Red Bull, but it ultimately depends on you. If you choose to have a driver transfer mid-season, I decide to swap Perez and Sonoda, perhaps. Or maybe just Sonoda replacing Perez and Lawson getting to the racing Wolves car. We don't really know. Um, okay, Sonoda and P10, still in the top 10 in the championship, 42 points. Stroll P11. Uh, Final scoring some points uh, well, regularly now, 31 points and on a podium. Uh, Pierre Gasly in P12 on 19 points. Um, yeah, it should be it should be Alex Albon. Sorry, um, forgot to fix this for Lebanana. Uh It's P12 for Alex Albon on 19 points and a podium. Uh, actually, because of that podium, obviously, on countback Albon is ahead of Gasly. Gasly in P13 on 19 points. Ocon P14-11, uh, P15 for Ricardo on 10 points, P16 for Bottas on 4 points, P17 also for Sargent on 2 points, P18 for Hulkenberg at 2 points as well, and the drivers yet to score points are Joe and Magnussen in P19 and P20. So let's see how it affected the Constructors' Championship. As we see Red Bull uh, now with a, big, a bigger lead than uh, we use we are used to see uh, early in the season. Two victories for them, eight podiums, by, by far the most podiums now with three pole positions and five fastest laps to their name as well. McLaren jumps into P2, uh, one point ahead of Mercedes on 195 points. Two victories, five podiums, three pole positions, and a fastest lap. Mercedes, uh, yeah, one point behind McLaren, victory, six podiums, still. Still within the hunt, I would say. Aston Martin jumps Ferrari to P4, so uh, this is a very interesting thing because earlier this season we saw Ferrari and Mercedes battle it out for the P2 in the championship, and Aston Martin was like nowhere. And now, uh, thanks to both drivers actually from Aston Martin scoring some good points, uh, it means Aston Martin is able to jump Ferrari to P4 in the constructor championship at as of this moment. They're actually the team with the most victories on three. Uh, they have six podiums, three pole positions, and a fast slap. Uh, with Mesh Ferrari uh, in P5 on 180 points, two victories, four podiums, uh, one pole position, and three fastest laps. The Racing Bulls team is keeps struggling basically for scoring any, any more points. At this point, 52 points for them. Uh, P7 for Alpine at 30, uh, P8 for Williams at 21 points now, thanks to almost winning in Spain, uh, and a podium obviously from Saudi Arabia. P4 for Sauber, uh, sorry, a P9 for Sauber at 4 points, and a P10 for Haas at 2 points. So, yeah, um, interesting fight for P2 in the constructors. I don't, I don't really know if any team can challenge Red Bull at this point, but I mean, and if you can change, we, we saw Red Bull having a really bad weekend simulation already and it can happen, definitely can happen again. So perhaps we could see McLaren 1-2 in the next race and that would make it uh, McLaren leading the constructors. Uh, we, we never know, obviously. Um, we're going to see. It's Austria next time, actually. So it's a good track for McLaren, especially Lando Norris. 
Uh, but it's also a very good track for Red Bull. It is called the Red Bull Ring, and Max Verstappen is one of the best drivers on that circuit as well. So, uh, a very interesting race upcoming. It is a sprint race as well, round 11, round 11 in Austria. Uh, this is, by the way, my favorite track on the calendar and favorite uh, race weekend on the calendar. Uh, alongside Brazil, I enjoy the Brazilian weekend uh, as a viewer more, but I enjoy the, the Austrian track a bit more uh, visually and driving it, obviously. Uh, only F1 games and so on. Um, yeah. If you enjoyed, enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe, like the video, and comment. Uh, it would I greatly appreciate all the support that you can give me and uh, so you can keep me going uh, doing this, these videos, yeah. Um, uh, next time is Austria, unfortunately uh, Lebanon is probably not going to be able to voice over the next few races, but hopefully for, for the next weekend we can arrange something. Uh, anyways, until later, uh, yeah. I'll see you tomorrow for the Austrian Grand Prix. Uh, see ya!